Second Chronicles chapter 17. And Jehoshaphat, his son reigned in his stead, and this would be his son would be Asa, picking up from chapter 16, reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. It means uh, Israel is still the enemy. There's still battles going on. There's still troubles. And Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, uh, is not going to go the way of Israel. And he's going to fight. He's going to battle. He's going to defend. Israel's doing wrong. And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa his father had taken. All right, he set, he put forces in the fenced cities of Judah. Having a fenced city is not going to do you no good if you still don't have an army in there. You still need the protection. So he's, he's fortifying the fenced cities, making them stronger. He set garrisons in the land of Judah. This would be uh, ammunition, stockpiles, food, troops, chariots. I mean, he's really digging in. He's really preparing for a battle against Israel. And in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. So these, these were lands in Israel that Asa took, that he goes in there and fortifies these cities. He, didn't turn, he doesn't turn them over back to the enemy. Like America's done with Japan, we won. We won against Japan. We won against Germany. But did we? Did we get Japan? Did we get Germany? No, we gave it back to the enemy. So, and the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. So, here's a good statement right here. Even though he's building, he's military bound. He's strengthening up. He, God is with him. I mean, just because God's with you doesn't mean, you know, oh, I don't need a military strength. And, you know, you don't go quote with, thou shall not kill. Well, listen, in the Old Testament, God supported and strengthened armies and battles. There's a time. Listen, there is no peace to the Lord Jesus Christ comes on this planet in a thousand year reign. And even after that, as soon as the devil is set loose, there, there's the, the, the least the fourth world war. And they're just, you know, Lord speaks fire down ahead and burns them up, and that's it. And then when we get into eternity, that's when the real peace comes. You still got to, listen, Paul speaks about for the Christian that we have a spiritual armor. Paul says our battle is not physical, but spiritual. As long as Satan's running around with his angel and the devils and all that, there's a battle. There's a there's a intergalactic Star Wars battle that's going to happen in heaven, and us Christians are going to watch it in Revelation 12, when Michael and his angels fight Lucifer or Satan and his angels. We're going to watch that, and we're going to come back with Jesus Christ as an army. Joel chapter two. It ain't done. And then turn around and say, God, you know, thou shalt not kill. And then that the church that quotes that verse has started how many wars? It's called hypocrisy. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David. Now look at the this is an important thing. His father David, David wasn't his father. Asa was his father. In the Bible, father can be your father and it can be a grandfather. In this case, a great, 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 great grandfather. What what is also saying here is David was the foundation of living right, of doing right, of having a pure heart, of having a contrite spirit. That when he sinned, David was that example. Saul sure wasn't. Jacob sure wasn't. And sought not unto Balaam. Now, Baal, B-A-A-L, that's the sun god. That's the male deity of God. The Balaam, the I am, that is the plural. What it's saying is it's, when you put Baal with asterisk, the moon, and you get Balaam, you get the, the sun that has a relationship with the moon, and you produce the stars. This is a, a, a galactic Milky Way kind of... Uh, religion. These are the little children of Baal and Ashtoreth. 
And this is where you get the astrology. You know, you look at the stars and all that. And they're all named after, you know, Greek gods. They're all named after gods. So he doesn't do that. And that note there tells us, and he sought not uh, unto Balaam, means there were people in before Genesis, I mean, before Second Chronicles 17, that the Jews were doing it. Because that statement would not be there. And probably during Asa's time, there were people certain after Balaam, and after Baal, and after Asherah. But sought to the Lord God of his father. So like Asa, he, he starts out right, and he, he's on fire for the Lord, and God likes him. You cannot find a king that does right in Israel. But here's another one. Asa had done right in the Lord. Solomon had done right in the Lord. Now Jehoshaphat is doing right in the Lord. And walked in the commandments, the laws. And not after the doings of Israel. Now that statement right there is, again, that's northern Israel. That's the ten tribes. They were not doing what they were supposed to be doing. And remember when we looked at Basha, he, he's building cities trying to prevent his people from going down south to do what's right. It's funny because when you read these kind of things, is Judah's down south, Israel's up north, and in America, you're always told that if you really want to find the true God, if you really want to serve God right, you got to come down south. I don't see that down here. We've been below the Mason Dixon line, and maybe you got to get up in the mountains and all that but very rare places few places there about is there really the true god the true bible being saw without the, the the worldliness without the junk without satan being in there now no church is 100 percent perfect i mean there are sinners we're all sinners but when you allow satan in the church that's false when you do Satan's ways and call it righteousness, the Bible says, Woe to them that do that call good evil and evil good. He's doing the law, and he's not doing that to Israel. And he's building an army, he's, he's doing what reverse what Basha did. He knows he knows Israel is, is in the wrong, he, and he's gonna make sure that Israel doesn't come try to attack. They already have, and he's probably trying to prevent. Not by force, but, you know, trying to stop the people down south from going up north. Where there is no God. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. And all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents. And he had riches and honors and abundance. And here we go. We're going back to Solomon. When David, there's riches. They're bringing presents. They're happy. What happened? They were happy during Asa's time. But as soon as uh, Rehoboam steps into the plate, they're not happy. And the leader of that brought them to north, gave them Israel proper, and they have not been serving God at all. Jeroboam made his own religion. You know who wants to split the churches? Those that are not happy. And they go off and they serve other gods. They build their own religion. You had a church split. But we've seen down south, they're happy. They're rejoicing in the king. And when they're doing right... We read in Asa yesterday, after he sinned against God, after the prophet Ananias came to him, we read that he was, uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, oh, he was, he was oppressing the people for no reason. It's not happening right now. There's been a switch. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Now that's a remarkable statement. Because usually when it talks about lifting up, it talks about pride. And that's your downfall. 
Here Jehoshaphat has lifted his heart not in pride, but to God. A complete opposite statement of pride. In other words, it says lifted up his heart. What, what would that mean? That means it's getting more and more and more closer to God. Think about yourself, him being on a ladder, starting off on the very bottom, and he's growing. He's growing and reaching towards God. Moreover, he took away the high places and the groves out of Judah. Now, that's always going to be a problem, now, no matter where you go in this land. They're going to have high places, and they're going to have groves. Now, took away the high places. I mean, Jehoshaphat is not going to go in there and remove a mountain. Evidently, there was something on those mountains, there was something on those hills that they were building, that they were, they had the groves and all that. He'd go in there and cut them down. Now, in the Schofield Bible, it says revival under Jehoshaphat. And every time we see a revival, you've got to put gods away. There is no revival unless you remove the gods. God will not meet you halfway. He's not going to do wrong. He's not going to do unrighteous. Just so you can get what you want. When the, when the great revivals came to America, they shut down the prostitution. They shut down the beer places. They, uh, they hid from sin. There was a time in America, if you had a man and woman uh, involved in a, a, a fornication or adultery of affair, they would hide. They'd do it in the middle of night. No one would know. But in America today, it's put on channel 1 to 4,000. 4, 4, Every afternoon on the major uh, uh, networks called a soap opera. The other junkie channels that promote. In the third year of his reign, he sent to his princes, even to Ben Hale, and to Obadiah, and to Zechariah, and to Nethanel, and to Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. Jehoshaphat is sending out teachers for the law on how to do what God wants to do. Churches, if you want to call it, synagogues, if you want to call it, Sunday school, whatever you want to call it, he's sending men out to learn God's ways. It is so important to him that whether there's lacking, where, where, where there's something missing, he has sent people out. And that's what the job of, of the church is. That's what the job of the Christian is. The, the job of the Christian says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. And with them he sent Levites. Those are the ones that are to do the job. He sends the princes in the authority. Wow. You mean a, a, a church, state, religion? He sent the Levites out under the princes and say, Listen, I authorize these Levites to go in there and teach. Even Shemaiah, Nethaniah, and Zebadiah, and Asheel, and Shemarabmeth, and Jehonathan, and Adjadiah, and Tobad Tobijah, and Tobajijah, Levites. Remember, not all Levites are priests, but all priests are Levites. With them, El Shemaiah and Jehoram priests. El Shammai and Jehoram are priests. They are of Aaron. But the Levites he sends into the land, they're just Levites. They're not priests. Levites were authorized by God to be that, that, that those people set apart to serve in the nation of Israel. They weren't given no land because the land and the possession was, was the inheritance was God himself. And if anybody was to teach this nation about God, it would be the Levites and the priests. 
Like today, if anybody would want to learn about God, God has pastors. He has evangelists. He has missionaries. He has the book. And they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. Now imagine these guys going under Jehoshaphat and having, you know, uh, a new Moses Ten Commandments. You know, instead of thou shalt, well thou, okay, maybe. You know, change. I don't think so. Because under the penalty of the Old Testament, if they did that, they get themselves a nice little stone put to bed and end up in hell. So they had to have the right law. They had to have the right words. With them and went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. Well, look at that. That's a circuit. They were circuit preachers. Now, they went throughout the cities of Judah and taught the people. I don't think they built the building. There's a quite possibility they went in people's houses like the book of Acts and taught. Maybe taught on the streets. Maybe in an open square in the, in the city. Maybe in, in a city where everyone gathered. Maybe they taught at the wells where all everybody gathered to get their water. At the gates where all the business meetings were concerned. Listen, street preaching and all that, it's all through the Old Testament. There was no churches in the cities. Now at this time, there was the temple. This is your early form of school. What is it? What is the earliest form of school that you can find? It is to teach the people about God. And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the lands that were round about Judah, so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Is that interesting? Again, like Asa and like Solomon. Those who did what God told them to do in the Old Testament, God gave them peace. That was a promise. That was in the law. If you to do what I tell you to do, I will give you peace. I will take care of you in that land. And listen, you'll have nothing to worry about. That's not today. That's an Old Testament promise to the Jew under the law. And it's happening. They're doing their part, and God said, if you do your part, I'll do my part. Today, well, what if I live right? What, what if I do everything God wants me to do? Uh, Paul says, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Well, that's not fair. Listen, in the Old Testament, they had to do a lot of things for them to be saved. And when they died, they didn't go straight to heaven like the Christian does. All we today, we just rely on nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing we do. And we're given all kinds of promises. Show me where in the Old Testament where a Jew, when he finally gets to heaven, gets to wear crowns. Show me the Old Testament where a Jew, if he did everything like he's supposed to, he's going to come back... With, at the second advent with the Messiah. Show me that. But we Christians, born again Christians, under a new dispensation, under a new era, under a new age called the church age, look at all the promises we get that the Old Testament did. We can look in our book, in our writings, and see their Messiah where David, Solomon, and Jehoshaphat never, ever saw into it. And I believe Peter said, they, uh, no, Jesus spoke. He said they looked into it, but they couldn't find it. Hebrews said they sought the promises, but they didn't get them yet. Abraham has not had that land yet. But he's going to get it in the new earth. By faith, he's still waiting. Peace to Jehoshaphat, to Jerusalem, because they're doing right. You know why Hamas, 
You know why the United Nations, do you know why Iraq is attacking and going after the Jews today? Because they're not living right. You know why Adolf Hitler went after the Jews? Because they did not want to go back to the land that was given to them. Business was good in Germany. World War II was the rod of correction to the Jew. Listen, if God is going to, to do that to his people, what Hitler did to the Jew, that is a rod of correction. That is a chastisement for not doing what you were supposed to be doing. What do you think God's going to do to the church? Do you think we're going to get uh, persecuted and all that? The church is being persecuted. Just not in America. Will we get persecuted in America? I have no idea. I have no idea when the Lord's coming back, but I believe it's soon. But there's one thing he can do to the American Christian. I'm not an American Christian. I'm a New Jerusalem Christian. I'm just passing through. I'm just a pilgrim. My home is New Jerusalem. I'm an ambassador, the Bible says. America is not going to be after the millennium. No war. Peace. Now, I forgot the thought I was thinking about. We're just passing through. Oh, I was saying, the American Christian, what could he lose if we do not get persecuted in this country? And we may. You can lose eternity, your crowns. Be, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall also reap. You imagine a whole bunch of people who, who think they're saved, and because your actions, and because of your playing, because of what you did with the world, and because of what you did with Satan, you cast many into hell, thinking they were saved. I used to say that about that one true motherly church. I'm, gonna, I'm starting to say that about the Baptist church, too. And it's funny, since 1987 in April when I got saved, I have done a complete reversal of thinking. As I grow older as a Christian, as I see more churches, as I see more events going on. I see a lot of people proclaiming to be Christians, and their mouth and their talk and their actions prove anything but. And I saw that the other night on a video. 99% chance that guy that I watched was not a Christian. Not by his words, not by his actions, and not by his attitude towards the word. Because Jesus said, if you're mine, you would love the word. The word is getting out by Jehoshaphat. They love the word. They want the people to know about the word. And God is giving them peace while they send them out. Listen, these Levites, these priests, and these princes don't need to worry about a battle. God's giving them peace, so they're just going into the city saying, How you doing? What's the reverse for today? How you doing? We're the morons. We're, from, we're the Jehovah Witnesses. Why ain't you the men of God coming to the door? We don't believe in door knocking. What were these guys going out? They're going up to the city gate saying, Hi, we're sent for Jehoshaphat. I'm the princess. We are authorizing this Levite and this priest to come into this town and teach the word of God. Come on in. And they blow the horns, trumpets, whatever they do. They gather everybody together and say, Jehoshaphat has sent the princess. It's like knocking on the door. What did the city gates have? I mean, what did the cities have? They had gates. But we're not going to do nothing like that. That's wrong. That's why we're in a mess we are in today. These guys, are go they're not going house to house. They're going city to city. 
I would love God to give me the opportunity to skip a house, to go, hey, go, go to Daytona Beach, gather everybody again, and tell them about me. Amen. What do you want me to do now, Lord? I want you to go down to, I want you to go down to Port Orange and gather everybody together and preach there. Hey, amen, Lord. What do you want me to do? I want you to go down to Smyrna Beach, gather everybody together and preach there. Hey, Lord, what do you want me to do? I want you to do Orlando. I want, and whatever cities. Forget going door to door. Gather all the cities together, the mayors and all them, and preach there. I love that opportunity. If the Lord said, I'll give, give you one wish, anything you have, I said, be the rapture. Well, then you're not going to get that wish. Pick another one. My main goal is stand before the, before the United Nuts in New York City with all the people standing around, with everyone hearing me, with all TV sets on me, and I tell them two things about the blood of Jesus Christ, and you better leave Israel alone. Out of the King James 1611 Bible. I'll go for the big stuff. Because I know if I preach to the United Nations and they reject God and they go mess with Israel, we're more and more step closer to the rapture. I know the Bible. So no one even wanted to mess with Israel. I'm a Judah. I'd say Israel. No one wanted to mess with Judah. None of the nations around them. Not even Israel themselves. By getting the word out, there was a fear, and people were getting right. What a revival! And some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat present. The enemy, the ones that kept fighting David, left and right, they're bringing presents to Jehoshaphat. Wow. You mean the Gentiles are coming and learning about God? Are you telling me Jehoshaphat is sending everyone around to learn about the word of God, and when the, when the Philistine comes, he's going to keep mum? I don't think so. He's got the enemy of, of Judah, David's enemy, Saul's enemy. He's got them coming over and giving them presents. This is where Gath came from. I mean, this is where Gath, that's where Gath. This is where Goliath and all the giants came from. I mean, if there's anybody who would have a little pity party, a little anger, a little bitterness would be, you know, you killed our giants. And tribute silver. Look at this one. And the Arabians brought him flock. The Arabians? If the Arabians in 2013 had any wish... Would be to wipe Israel completely off the map. As a matter of fact, if you go over to the Middle East today and go into their classroom, which I don't completely understand how they do it, Israel is not even on their maps. And here on the Jehoshaphat, he wants to do right. He loves God and God loves him. The Arabians are what? They brought him flocks 7,700 rams. 7,700 he goes. Seven is the number complete. And God recorded how much they brought. And we don't even know how many wise men came to Jesus when he was about three or four years old. But we know about the gifts of the Arabians. Today, which is an enemy of God. Why are they an enemy of God? Because they're not obeying what, Je what Jehoshaphat did. And Jehoshaphat waxed great, exceedingly. And he built in Judah castles and cities of store. Castles, that's fortresses. That ain't just a fenced city, that's a fortress. And then city, cities of store. He had these you store places all over the place. Like Solomon, he had so much coming in. He had to build these little storage places all over the place that you, that you can store your goods. Those store places, nothing new. They're in the Bible, Old Testament. 
Solomon had him, and Jehoshaphat had him. He had much business in the cities of Judah, and the men of the war, and, yeah, and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. Much business in the cities of Judah. What's that mean? There was jobs. You know what America's lacking today? Jobs. Why are we lacking jobs? Because we're not doing what Jehoshaphat did. When you watch a video of, 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 a, of a suitcase get opened up with Bibles in it, and they're hugging the Word of God, and they're kissing it, I think the business will go over there. What did Jesus say again when I say, they that love the Word? Christians and Baptist churches don't even love the Word. When you, when you see a car drive out of the Baptist church and the Bible goes flying off the roof, when you see in the Baptist church a Bible is in the back seat of the car and stays there for seven days to the next Sunday service, to when you see a bunch of kids at a Baptist church take their Bibles and throw them across the, the, the pavement and grab a basketball, When you got uh, Christians in the Baptist churches that don't even open their Bibles. When you got churches in the services that don't even open their Bibles. When you got Baptist churches that don't even have the right Bible. When people are correcting the Bible. Many men of value. You know what that means? That means God was blessing with mighty, strong men. That's a blessing, you know. Even when you're in peace, that you know you got men that can, I mean, they're Marines. They're strength. They're strong. Like David's army, mighty men. When you get one guy takes on a whole bunch of, uh, of, of men fighting over beans. <clears throat> You get one guy, I mean, he's battling a Moabite, he's got a lion-like face, it's the middle of winter, and he just takes him and, and whips his butt. You got another guy who goes up to Ethiopia and grabs his own spear and kills him. You got David takes a little stone and, and kills a giant. And with all weapons of mass destruction and push buttons and all that, it took us forever to get two men of, the, of America most wanted. And these are the numbers of them according to the house of their fathers. Of Judah, the captains of thousands. Here we go with names again. Adna the chief. And with him mighty men of valor, 300,000. This guy had 300,000 mighty men. Next to him was, I hate when they put half a name on one line. Jahanan, the captain. And with him, two hundred and four score thousand. That's two thousand eighty, two hundred eighty thousand men. That's a lot of men. The next under him was Amasha, the son of Zechariah, who willingly offered himself unto the Lord. Look at that. He himself, with no orders, no commander in chief over him to say, "Do this." His own will, he offered himself unto the Lord. That means he gave himself uh, heart, mind, and soul. Now, if you want somebody in your military, you want somebody to go off in a battle, and war, you want somebody, you better know this name, Amashia. Now, I'm mispronouncing pronouncing it, and that's, that's wrong. This guy was a soldier standing for Jesus Christ, and we've got our government today that is fighting you to say whether you can you can evangelize or you can uh, teach people about the Bible. We've got a military government in the United States today. When we send troops over to the Middle East, they grab our troops' Bibles. They can't take them over there. We are spilling American blood 
upon our foreign, foreign soil and we can't even take the Bible and we can't even take our God. Listen, there's enough nuclear missiles right now that we can take care of those cities that don't want the God of the Bible. How is it that a foreign nation relying on us for help tells us what to do? If that's not back, at, back backwards, I don't know what is. We're going there to help them out and they tell us what to do. And with him 200,000 mighty men of valor. And of Benjamin. And Benjamin, he's the fierce one. Eliad, Elida, a mighty man of valor. And with him armed men with bow and shield, two, yeah, 200,000. And next unto him was Jehoshaphat. And with him a hundred and four score thousand ready, prepared for the war. There was no war yet. These guys were the elite. They stand on a battlefield, arm to arm, sword to sword, uh, bow to bow. You know, there are times in battle in America, you get an army that would line up. And they that were standing would fire the weapons, drop down to their knees to reload while the ones that were reloading stand up and fire. And then get on their knees to load. And then the next group get up to fire. And you got a whole bunch of uh, military today. There are all these protections. But IUDs can take, it will kill them. Great forces, army, horses, the cavalry, strong men. Listen, when you killed somebody back then, you saw their face. You saw them and heard them scream out in pain. All Quiet in the Western Front is a wonderful book to read about the, the, the battlefield. When, when he has to lay there overnight because they're launching uh, the, the cannons. And when one, each one hits the ground, the whole ground shakes. And he falls into a hole with a, with a man that's dying, a Frenchman. And he's talking to the corpse. And he's apologizing to the corpse. And he's saying, oh, if we would have been another time, we would, we would have tea together. We would sit down in a restaurant. We wouldn't be doing this right now. And then once everything's clear and it's time to move out, he don't care. He throws that body off and runs to protect himself. And then they're fighting over a pair of boots. Who gets the boots of the dead guy? That's battle. That's hand-to-hand -hand combat. And, uh, and next on the hand was Jehoshaphat. And with him a hundred and four score thousand ready prepared for the war. These waited on the king. Beside those whom the king put in the fenced cities throughout all Judah. What we read is, the, is, is like David's mighty men. These were the ones that were under the king. These were the secret service that protected the king. Then he had the other men. He had soldiers in all defense cities that we read about earlier. Even in the time of peace, Judah was packed and ready for battle. And they still relied on God. And they had a soldier that gave himself to the Lord. What a great celebration. What a great time that we're going to see as we continue. 